I can still remember it. Uh, I was an 18 year old man at the time and uh, I had about 500 US dollars in my pocket. There's lots of things to do and to see and to feel and to be part of this great, unique little island in the Mediterranean. We have one particular temple, which is underground, which is quite unique in the world because you don't normally get temples of this age which are uh, underground. In fact, it is the only one in the, in the world which is underground. We're talking uh, very affordable uh, uh, levels, you know, with a, a good meal and a, a bottle of wine, etc., costing you about uh, 60, 70 dollars max. It was a way of helping manufacturing companies come into Malta, make it very simple for them to set up shop, help them in the first few uh, weeks, few months of setting up shop. This year, we are having a, a particularly significant event, which is bringing the uh, uh, ministers of tourism, or as you would call them, the Secretary of State for Tourism from the Mediterranean region to come and meet in Malta and discuss and possibly agree a plan to start marketing the Mediterranean as a destination. TV Sunday, the power of truth. Tony, thank you very much for joining us. It's our great pleasure to welcome you. Thank you very much, Kern, and uh, I'm so happy to be on your show. Thank you for welcoming me. And technology, again. technology rule the world. How we connect from New York City to Malta. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. So, so while going to your biodata, oh my God, you have done a lot. I'm so impressed. It's amazed that somebody can do such a wonderful job in his lifetime. And it's still you are active in the industry. And tourism industry in Malta is very honored having a personality like you. But tell me something that how you started your tourism career. Ah, oh, that's a that's a good point. It was a long time ago, Karen, but I, I can still I can still remember it. Uh, I was an 18 year old man at the time, and uh, I had about 500 US dollars in my pocket, and uh, and and I had a great dream of. of of, of becoming something in my, my life, but with 500 US dollars in my pocket, the only thing I could do at the time was buy a car and, uh, uh, and do chauffeur work, do uh, uh, taxi work. So I did that for about 15 months uh, uh, before we started growing the company into what it is today. So very small beginnings. It was a wonderful time. I enjoyed myself tremendously taking people around the island showing them what we have so tony thank you very much for telling something about how you started your career now let us know something that you are a veteran personalities in tourism in malta why people need to visit this tiny country in europe please can you explain sure Karen, e e e the, the island is a tiny island it is only yeah. 331 square kilometers however it has an enormous history it goes back to 5,000 years before Christ, 7,000 years from now. It has temples which predate the pyramids in Egypt. And that gives you an idea of uh, uh, the history that, that we have here in Malta. And when I say temples, you can actually see the temples. They are there. It's not just one stone where somebody said there was a temple here once. You can actually see them. Most of these temples were buried underneath uh, 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 rock and soil. And so when, when, when they were uncovered, they were very much still in, in, in more or less intact. We have one particular temple, which is underground, which is quite unique in the world because you don't normally get temples of this age which are uh, underground. In fact, it is the only one in the, in the world which is underground. Then, of course, we have uh, 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 the letter history. Particularly, we have the period of the Knights of Malta, which were here uh, a, a power in the Mediterranean from the 15th to the 18th century. And they left an enormous heritage in, 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 in buildings. Uh, uh, we have a, an excellent Baroque city in Valletta, an extremely beautiful uh, old city in Emdina. Um, and then we have uh, 
Uh, also, part of the history is the English connection where the British were here for 150 years. Then, of course, we have the climate. The climate is yes, great, it's beautiful, it's nice and sunny, temperate weather. Most of the time, it's, uh, it's springtime here. And, uh, and, and the sea around us is absolutely incredible. It's the blue Mediterranean. You can dive and we have a lot of divers coming to, 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 to water. So there's lots of things to do and to see and to feel and to be part of this great, unique little island in the Mediterranean. Visiting our trip in these days are really expensive because of the year fear, because of the price hiking of a hotel and food as well. So how do you say about Malta tourism? Is it still affordable or it's just like a luxurious tourism as well? Well, Malta is part of the European Union and part of Euro. So our costs have uh, uh, risen um, over the years, but we still uh, have a very competitively priced product here. A, a good five star uh, hotel for a room for one night will cost you about 180 uh, to 200 dollars. So we're not talking big bucks here. We're talking uh, very affordable uh, uh, levels, you know, with a, a good meal and a, a bottle of wine, etc., costing you about uh, 60, 70 dollars max. Uh, the cost of living is, is, is very, very reasonable here. I wouldn't say it is cheap because uh, I don't think there is anywhere else, anywhere in the world which is cheap nowadays, but it is very competitive when you compare it to the major cities in Europe. As you said, the facilities are amazing. Natural beauties are so breathtaking. And the island is itself also. There are a lot of beaches and many more things to enjoy in the sea. And likewise, the affordable to every kinds of tourists. So if I plan a trip for a week for Malta, how much you would like to say that I have to manage money? Uh, if you were talking about a seven day stay, let's say yeah. the average stay in Malta actually is seven days, so seven yeah. nights. So uh, basically, I think if you talk about uh, uh, the hotel room costing about $200, so about uh, $2,000 for the week, uh, uh, including, including meals. But mm -hmm. then uh, uh, if you want to do diving or if you want to rent a boat for a day, that would be on top of those two thousand dollars. So, of course. so tell me something about the year connection or a road connection from Europe. Any country of the Europe is accessible, but what about the year connection, like uh, airports and uh, travel and airlines? People, if you want to from United States or South America or Asia or Africa, is there easy accessible for, from airlines? Yeah. Absolutely. We are connected to about 90 European uh, uh, or, or North African uh, airports. So uh, uh, you can use from America, you probably have to use a gateway, either London Heathrow or Frankfurt or uh, from South America, Madrid or, or Lisbon to, to, to get to Malta because we don't have direct flights. Uh, uh, from from the US or South America. However, uh, 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 all the major airports in Europe will have a direct flight into Malta. So coming to, 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 to Malta is, is reasonably easy and we do get a lot of American tourists that would be uh, mostly doing uh, two or three uh, 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 different countries in, in Europe and Malta would be one of those two or three different countries that they would be doing. Yeah. Um, you cannot drive to Malta in, in, in so far as we have the sea all around us. However, you yeah. can actually drive down to Sicily and we have got a very good connection by catamaran. So you can drive onto the catamaran and uh, the crossing is only 90 minutes from Sicily to Malta. Connection from Europe is very good and accessible. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, Tony, let me talk something about your your you know leadership. Like you were a chair, you were you have been a chairman of Boston Holding Limited. Can you tell me something about this company that you are leading? Absolutely, Bastion, Bastion Holdings is a financial services company. 
we, uh, uh, we provide a number of services here in Malta. Uh, primarily, we're in the uh, foreign exchange business and in the payments business. Um, uh, we represent here uh, uh, Western Union, a name that you probably know quite well. Um, uh, we then also do funds, uh, uh, we do fund management, uh, 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 and we do also pensions. So pension holdings actually is the uh, financial services arm of, of the group. It was established about 25 years ago. Uh, we um, have, uh, uh, we're licensed by the uh, Malta Financial Services Authority. We have three licenses there. Very active, young team, and mostly led by women. You are also the president of Malta Hotels and Restaurant Association. So. Tell me something about uh, hospitality, like hotel and restaurants in Malta, and what okay. your organization exactly do. Okay, we are a very, very strong lobby group uh, uh, with, with, with government, uh, very, uh, mm -hmm. very active. Uh, we, uh, we, we participate in the decision making. In fact, uh, during the pandemic, our association was uh, very instrumental in. Uh, convincing government to uh, uh, help the industry, especially the workers in the industry, by providing uh, uh, support in terms of uh, uh, wages and salaries. And it was very uh, generous support. We are also uh, very active with the uh, uh, Malta Tourism Authority when it comes to promoting the island, the inward uh, bound tourists. We're very active with the airlines, so we are facilitating uh, uh, um, the, the easy uh, entry into services by new airlines. So we're very, very uh, much active in that area. And then we're very active in the industry locally, where we provide a lot of training to our uh, uh, employees, to the employees of our members. We, have, we, we probably now have about 90% of, of the industry, which are members of, of our organization. Um, um, and we then do a number of activities during the year, uh, particularly uh, we have uh, the Mediterranean Tourism Forum, where we bring a lot of people from around the Mediterranean to Malta to talk tourism. Uh, it's, it's a focal point for tourism, Malta, it's, it's a great place to hold these type of meetings. Do you have any data like how many hotels are there and how many restaurants are there? Do you have that? Yes. Yeah, there is about, uh, in terms of uh, hotels, uh, uh, there is about uh, uh, 130 hotels, and then there are uh, what, what, are, what today are called the boutique hotels. The boutique mm -hmm. hotels, I would tend to think, will have about 40 uh, in, in Malta. Uh, restaurants or catering establishments, we've got about 3,000. Yeah. In, so it's pretty pretty big numbers for a small island of uh, five hundred thousand yeah. population. But still, that that's a remarkable number, and I believe that all the hotels have really good quality and wonderful Absolutely. service. I believe so. Absolutely. And, and one Absolutely. more thing: that once you lead the Malta Industry Parks Limited, what kind of industry was that at the time? And Malta Industrial Park still has uh, ten industrial parks. Uh, these were these are uh, areas where manufacturing has its basis. Our job was to provide uh, the accommodation, the, 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 the factories, the factory space, and, uh, and, and maintain the industrial estates to a very high level. So it was a way of helping manufacturing companies come into Malta, make it very simple for them to set up shop, help them in the first few uh, weeks, few months of setting up shop in terms of providing not only the accommodation, but providing the power, provide, providing all the services that are necessary in order that you can have a, a, a rapid startup uh, uh, happening and ensuring that the uh, bureaucratic part of the startup is uh, handled efficiently and quickly. Um, we had about a thousand tenants in total in these uh, eight uh, or ten uh, in industrial estates. Uh, and after the startup, of course, we always help them 
uh, in, uh, in, in any expansion plans they had and, and generally uh, ensured that they had a, a, a smooth a, a, an operation as possible and let them concentrate on doing what they're best at doing, which is uh, manufacturing what they were, they were manufacturing and selling it abroad. And um, Tony, one thing I directly want to ask you that you have been appointed multiple position by the Malta government. Yes. Multiple, and those are really, you know, sensitive, high profile, and in terms of responsibility, those positions are in a top priority. Tell me that how did you perform those those things and what are the reasons that government select you for those responsibilities? <laughs> it's not my good looks, Kurt, for sure. Well, um, um, basically, I, I believe I bring to the table a, a wide uh, uh, era of experiences. Uh, we, I've served uh, as a uh, director on our national airline, a director on the airport. Uh, the, the, the Malta uh, Development Corporation, where we uh, brought in uh, manufacturers from all over Europe. Um, so basically, I believe that uh, uh, governments have a, a, a requirement to have business people within their uh, uh, teams in order to uh, uh, make life uh, as easy and as simple for other business people. And this has been the reason why government has asked me uh, many times to uh, contribute towards uh, 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 the efficient running of, uh, of the government. Please remember also that the island is only, uh, there's only 500,000 population here. So uh, it's not like we have uh, a few million uh, as a pool and uh, many, many people from where to choose from. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a tiny area. And because of that, you also get to know uh, uh, the uh, uh, people that are running the, the, the country uh, uh, very quickly. And of course, because of uh, uh, previous uh, 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 appointments, previous uh, uh, management of uh, public entities that I've had, uh, governments tend to want to take on uh, uh, somebody that has had the experience of running a, 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 a private enterprise, but also running a government enterprise, which is quite different in terms of uh, accountability. When you're running a, 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 a public enterprise, it is very, very different in terms of accountability than when you're running a private enterprise. Uh, a public enterprise, you're, you're accountable all the time, to everybody and everywhere, whereas a private enterprise, you're accountable to your shareholders only. How do you feel being honored uh, when you make something different? And how you like to underline your achievements and contribution in tourism in Malta? Very interesting area of, of tourism in Malta. It, it remains the ability to provide a, a hospitable uh, uh, environment for those coming to, to the island. And our objective should be to make the visit as memorable an experience as, as possible and give them the, the traditional Maltese hospitality for which we have been known for many, many years now. Uh, this is what I believe we should be aiming for all of the time to give that truly Maltese welcome. That is absolutely amazing. What is your future plan, Tony? Because you have spent many decades in tourism and maybe tourism in Malta is in a really good shape nowadays. So what do you think that um, you are planning for future? The, 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 the tourism has been here now in, in, in its present form for about 50 years. I yeah. think we can be here for many, many more years to, to come, provided we maintain our uh, hospitality, our our culture, and and uh, our our ability to welcome people in the traditional way. It it doesn't change much. People want to arrive to experience what we have here as heritage from our forefathers and to have a safe 
and uh, 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 very pleasant stay in Malta. And this is what we have to concentrate on providing over and over and over again, that people will come all the time. I think this is something incredible moment that, that you enjoy in your life. What it makes sense to you receiving that most prestigious honor from the head of the state? It, it was amazing, Karen. It, it, it was an amazing feeling, and I can assure you that uh, uh, for me, this honor is, 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 is tremendous, and it gives me much, much more satisfaction than if I had been uh, 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 given a, a, a recognition in terms of monetary uh, 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 monetary requirements. You know, this is something which uh, is given every year to a select number of uh, people, not a, a great deal of people receive this uh, order of merit. And I'm so happy and delighted to be forming part of this small and unique group who have received this merit, this order of merit over the last few years. It's a great pleasure talking to you. It's a wonderful time. And eventually, would you mind to explain a little bit about Malta Tourism Forum that you guys are going to organize? We bring together something like 1,500 uh, uh, people, maybe a little bit more, uh, mostly from the Mediterranean business basin, uh, people as far apart as uh, uh, Turkey on the eastern uh, side of the Mediterranean and Spain on the western side of the Mediterranean. So we do have about 1,000 people coming in from all over uh, uh, the Mediterranean, plus about 500 or so from the industry in Malta. This year, we are having a, a particularly significant event, which is bringing the uh, uh, ministers of tourism, or as you would call them, the Secretary of State for Tourism from the Mediterranean region to come and meet in Malta and discuss and possibly agree a plan to start marketing the Mediterranean as a destination. The Mediterranean brand is, is incredibly good and we want now to go further with this and do this jointly as a Mediterranean group. TV Sunday, the power of truth.